Okay, back for another video that I promised, part two, where I'm going to do some wood carving with the charade. I'm going to make a spatula again. Um, this is liable to be a rather noisy video because it's blowing a hooli here. It's raining cats and dogs, and um, I have a pagoda behind the shed, so the wind chimes on the pagoda are going. So it's, the trees are blowing. I've got an American oak tree above me that's just blowing around. So. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, it's going to be a bit of a noisy one, so. But that's what it's like being outdoors, isn't it? Hopefully, sh I've got a dead cat on my external microphones, and the wind's blowing the opposite way, so I'm hoping you won't get any wind noise. Right, so let's have a look at this. So, this is the blank that I've made. Let me zoom out the smidge. So, this is the blank I've made. Again, this is spalted. Ace of Palmatum Senkaki. This is a different part again in the tree, so we've got a different bit of spot in. We've cut our end off, we can see the colours that are running through here. We've got some like a bluey later stage um, fungi that's going through. Like I think it disappears somewhere. We've got about up to there. Um, so that's our blank. What I'm thinking of doing actually now, while I'm there is um, if I do this now what I'm liable to get is a centre bit running through the handle I don't, from previous experience that's um, not the best look because you can see how high our um, on this side how high our heartwood is because this is a reverse piece um, when I say reverse let me be clear so this piece here if I come in this way this is the heartwood then um, <clears throat> that would be normal. Reverse is to come in down through that way from the sapwood into the heartwood. You wouldn't believe it's from the same tree, this, would you? Unless I've got this mixed up, but I'm pretty sure. No, it is. I can remember I've cut it out. It's from the same tree. You would start to even think that they come from the same tree. But, but it is. So I remember cutting. I've I cut it up outside, I remember cutting it, I only had two types, I had smoke brush and Ace of Palmate and that's the only smoke um, spotted wood I've had, so I know it's hard to see, hard to think that this comes from the same, but it's a large branch that I chopped off, I and mean, this is some of the pieces, it's a very mature Acer, it's been there, golf. 35 years, something like that. So, anyway, so what I was thinking of doing, it looks better if you, if you, if I was to run this down one side and have this side, you know, the, the sat wood, the whiter wood. Um, if I didn't have this colour, I'd be tempted to do this the other way. What I'm on about here is I'm going to make the blade, I'm going to take the corner off so that the blade runs that way, so the handle. So this is flat now, so it'll be flat like that. So the angle, so it's flat there. So what I'm going to do is turn the blade so that the handle's like that. So when I flatten it, I bring in this into one side of the handle. It looks better. Um, I've got some interesting grain here. Um, I could do it the other way, so I could flatten it the other way, and then I would turn the handle up there, and then I would accentuate the grain structure on the top because you're always concerned with the top of the piece that's the most important top of the spoon top of the spatula it's the bit that you see most of the time when you're using it um, so that's the most important part looks wise um, well this is a nice grain structure I don't know if you can see there you've got a lot of layers so if I start cutting into those layers and knocking them back they go dunk, 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 along the top and it, that will look nice but I've got better colour here on this side. This is more. See, if I'd done it normal, this would have run the whole length of the um, the spatula. Um, from previous experience, it looks nice, but it doesn't look as nice as if you mix in the white and sort of bleed through. Because you get these lovely browns. You can sort of see this coming through here. You get these lovely browns and bleed through colours. In my experience, it's better to have as many colours on a piece as you can. 
rather than just continuous pieces running through the work it doesn't look so good so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to go away chop that down corner to there and then we'll come back and we'll start with our charade okay so we're back again so taking down the corner there it's only roughly done again I've brought in these colors now to the heartwood's being extended up this one side and see what the thinking is and then I'll keep this white so this will run up here and we've got these nice blues there so that's done so now I just need some refinement and um, we'll, oh my god start on our freshly sharpened charade I hope you can hear what I'm saying I'll let you listen to the weather Do some nice clean cuts there. Yeah, lovely and sharp, definitely. See, feel an increase in sharpness. See lovely colours coming through. That's what you get with spouting. You just get the most amazing colours in different parts of the tree. You never know what you're going to get. You can cut one bit off and think, oh, that ain't that good. And then you cut it another bit further out. You think, wow, look at that. It's just, it's just how nature sort of eats into the, how the fungi eats into the wood. It does it in such a random way and you get such random colours. When you're working towards you, it might not be, you might be able to see, it might be obvious to you, but if it's not, what I'm doing here is I'm locking my hand so that I can only come to there. Then I, when I'm coming towards me, you might think, well, I'm working, I could slip and go into myself, but no, my hand's locked, it's locked up right. So, I, you know, I can only do that. Even if I slip, I'm only because I'm locked upright. Another thing that's what's good about a big handle, I'm really locked in, I like this handle, This I could do it even bigger to be honest with you, this is like I would say the minimum size, preferable size for a handle for wood carving, it just gives you power, a lot of handles you might think feels a bit big some handles on people but actually when you start doing power strokes in wood and start really using your knife for wood carving like bulking out like we are now then um, you realise just yeah actually a bigger handle than might feel comfortable is actually the way to go it's easy to think oh that's perfect in my hand but 
when you actually get a bigger handle in your hand and start using it, you think, oh, the hand's more open, it's more got a grip on it. When it closes in too far, you start to lose and you hold on the knife like the purchase on the knife like you think a bigger handle's definitely better. That's what I'm trying to say. Carving with that rough rider hunting knife, the handle's way too small. I could see when I was paying back the video, my hand was moving. I just didn't have a good grip on, on the handle. I could see it in the video replays. It's just like, yeah, that's really, that handle's just not big enough. Not for wood carving. Probably perfect for skinning, you know, it's, it's a totally different thing, isn't it? Let's do a bit more on this blade. And we've got since so this will dictate the shape to me. Kind of might be too bright. I don't know if you can see. We've got some lovely patterning, some lovely um, grain structure going on this way. See, so if I was to do more pointy, I'd cut that out. I will actually make the shape of this spatula now. I'll keep that bit just to keep that drain, grain structure and that colour. So I'll push more over this way for the handle because I want to keep that or I'll start to come in about there because that is particularly beautiful and that's what if you've read any of my descriptions that's what I'm always trying to do I'm always trying to think of making the most beautiful piece I can I'm trying to bring out the beauty of the wood in the piece as much as possible because I haven't got a strict design um, I can do that I can just make the design fit the pattern if you like to fit the, the wood being guided by obviously practicality it's got to be practical um, first and foremost but it's a very simple shape there's a number so many shapes that you can use and still be practical for a spatula but, and that really is pretty so I want to at least start to come in down here I want to keep all that about to there I'd rather come in this way up to a little bit and then a little bit there I'm going to keep that again that's the beauty of not having anything too fixed in, in stone any particular design if you're coming at it with an open mind Let's take out some bulk from back here. This has got to go. Really sharp now. You cannot argue with that. That's a proper wood carving knife now. But you can see that. If it's not, you would just see me having to really work excessively hard. But this is just coming out. It's a soft wood, but nevertheless, it's quite dry. So it, once they start drying out, it's 
you know, even softwoods could go hard. So it's, you know, it's, this knife is spot on. I still think it would do its job. It's not an unsupported edge that would break when you batten something. It's, it's, if you think about it, it's actually cutting through wood as well. Battening's the same thing, isn't it? In some ways, you might be doing a bit harder, you might be getting a bit more force there, but... To me, if a knife edge will go cross grain, like what we're going to do in a, in a bit, back here, if it'll go cross grain and you can really talk the edge, you can really hear it going... <coughs> that's, that's lateral stress on the blade. It's a bit too thick to do that now, but if it do that, then I think you'd be fine battening. It's got some nice colours. Nearly flat. Just needs a bit of coming from the bottom, really. We're doing that. It's just a
bit soft that wood there, you've got to be careful there. <laughs> Lost a bit, quite a bit of its um, density, it's like on the limit of what I'd want to use. See, it's got finesse. Well, I think a little top-up stroke this could do with now. Cause it's done a fair bit of work, but obviously you can see how refined it is, but I always find always best to keep on top of the polish. Well, I'll keep on going. I'll probably finish this work, to be honest with you. It's Yeah, it needs sharpening now. It's not blunt by any means, but I can just feel that it will top up now and that will bring this knife right back. It's not, probably the tiniest little spit scratch pattern on there, nothing to speak of. There won't be any serrations or anything like that on this, this edge. But I just know from experience that if I top it up now with a very gentle little stroke, I can bring it back to, well, straight back to where it was when it came off the stone, basically. So I think I'm making video, that's where we are. So I think I'll oil it up. This is the work. Um, and see things better then, and then you'll be able to see, and then I'll stroke up the knife, and then we'll finish this work. So a little bit more fine tuning, so a little bit of finishing. Um, and then we're done.